not for Anthony Davis. Uh, Rob, I need a forty thing. Yeah, you got no. Okay, I got the master. Here you go. No, you need to hold on that because you know, so you'll know who's doing what. We got any more young people? I got, I'm good. peaceful people Thank just you. simply yes. asking yes. oh god Thank you. Thank simply you. asking oh god that we be heard yes. and that your people have mercy while here upon this earth that we might be able to live a peaceable life yes, with Lord. one and another yes. now god we ask you to bless our leader you, Lord. according yes. to your bless will your god way. bless him oh god as you've never blessed him before god and then god yes. only you yes. can do god then god as we move forward as we bring your now, God, that you would go before us now, God, that you would move the ears and the hearts of those, oh God, that would hear. Yes, God. Yes. And God, the day in glory in heaven, we pray in the immaculate name of no other than Jesus, the Christ, we pray. Conscience, and pray in and protest in and violate with good conscience the rules of the legislature about gathering. But we do it in love, and we do it in the spirit of justice. Mm -hmm. Forty-five years ago today, after Dr. King had been shot, <coughs> Ralph Abernathy and other ministers led a delegation to Washington, D.C. to meet with cabinet members and congresspeople to challenge them regarding the ugly legacy of poverty and injustice. They continued the movement then, we continue it now. Yes. Mm. The great, greatest of all of the righteous principles of whether the Christian scriptures or the Jewish scriptures have one common theme. Mm -hmm. Comes to matters of private failure, uh, we are to go to our priest and be forgiven. And, uh, but in the public square, in the public square, the constant refrain is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and then love your neighbor yeah. That's right. as yourself. Yeah. In the public square, the constant call is to preach good news to the poor, proclaim freedom to the prisoner, and healing to the sick, to set the oppressed free. The constant, the constant refrain Thank you. is, let justice roll down like waters. The constant refrain is learn to do right, yeah, do right. care for the children, lift up the widows and the vulnerable, yeah, and then you shall be called repairers of the breach. Yeah. 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 I could not help but think <coughs> as we can't come here today, a placard outside has the name of James Harris. He was a part of that early group of black and white fusion politicians in 1868 who said we must move out of the past of slavery and racial division into a new land, and it must start with the writing of a fresh constitution. Yes, James Harris, James Harris. Uh, J. W. Hood, ministers, mm -hmm. wrote these, helped write these words that every legislator over there 
put their hand on a Bible to uphold. Mm -hmm. And anything less is, co is a constitutional violation. Mm -hmm. It says in that Constitution that everything that is to be done in that place is to be done solely for the good of the whole. Mm -hmm. It says we hold it to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. That's in the federal uh, Declaration of Independence, but it's in our Constitution mm -hmm. that among these are uh, life, liberty, the enjoyment of the fruit of their own labor, the pursuit of happiness, and listen, this is where we must hold them accountable. All political power is vested in and derived from the people. All government of right originates from the people mm -hmm. and is founded upon their will only and is instituted solely for the good of the whole. And anything less than that, anything less than that is a violation of our most fundamental principles. Anything less than that means that people swore to do one thing and now they're doing another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything less than yes, that right. that's rooted in injustice, mm -hmm. that will have a racial or racist impact on the lives of people, that will further classism. Love and justice in the face of that demands a witness. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yes. There must be a witness in the face of extremism mm -hmm. and regressive public policy. Right. When politicians in the 21st century decide that they want to be like the George Wallaces of the, of the 20th century, they want to in, in, in begin to push a new Southern strategy, when they want to deny people fundamental rights, the most noble sentiments of our Constitution, then we have to have a witness. And so we're going to witness in love and justice because anything less would be an indictment upon our faith That's right. and an indictment upon who we are called to be yes. as human beings of conscience. Mm -hmm. And so today we will read a document in un and together. Different readers will come from their perspective. We want to make it clear why we are here today in this church at this altar. And then we'll take questions. We are North Carolinians who choose today nonviolent civil disobedience. Yes in the face of an avalanche of extremist policies mm -hmm. that threaten health care, yeah. that threaten education, yeah. that threaten the poor, yeah. that threaten creation of jobs, yeah. and that threaten voting rights. Yes, All right. The book of Micah asked us a public policy question. What does the Lord require but to do justice and love mercy and walk humbly before God? It is in the spirit of openness to the prophet's question that we gather here as people of faith and citizens of North Carolina. We have written Governor Matory. We have written the General Assembly. We have brought thousands of people to the People's House and yes. hundreds of activists. Mm -hmm. And we are once again, through putting our bodies on the line, asking them to reconsider their assault on the poor, yes. the unemployed, our many citizens without health care, and I am battled public schools and public education. We're asking them to reconsider and get on the right side of history. Mm -hmm. They have already voted. Mm -hmm. And we look at what we call the preponderance of legislation, this avalanche of bad policy. That's right. They've already voted and passed legislation to deny federal funds to, for Medicaid to 500,000 poor North Carolinians. Mama. That's shameful. They've already voted to take unemployment benefits from 165,000 North Carolinians. They've already raised taxes on 900,000 of North Carolina's poor and working by ending the earned income tax so they could pay a tax break to 23 multimillionaire families. Oh, yeah. And let it be said here, if I might take a privilege, that's 1.6 million North Carolinians, not 1.6 million Democrats, not 1.6 million Republicans, not 1.6 million black people, yes. not 1.6 million white people, or 1.6 million Latinos. They are even hurting people in their own party. Mm. Oh my God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Though it has a disparate impact, yes. 
yes. upon yes. certain areas and certain races and certain ge geographical areas. Yes. They have already, between this session and last session, voted to take over $1.6 billion from public education and now are trying to pass a voucher plan to hand out public money to private schools. Mm. They want to restart the death penalty, even yeah. though North Carolina has had the <laughs> largest number of people exonerated from the death penalty. They want to repeal well, the right. Racial Justice Act that was proven constitutional and proven necessary by, in a courtroom. And they want to codify anti-labor -la language in our Constitution when the Constitution that was written by blacks and whites 145 years ago says that every person has the right to the enjoyment of the fruit of their own labor. Right. And then they want to do all of this and then do the, the greatest harm, mm -hmm. and that is roll back voting rights. Mm -hmm. Pass 21st century poll taxes. Yeah. Roll back early voting, ban Sunday voting, end same day registration mm -hmm. that will cost us millions Million. and deny so many the right to vote. And they want to write a bill they've already passed in the House that's more restrictive than Alabama <laughs> and more restrictive to South Carolina. Mm. And you only do this kind of policy when you can't afford a big turnout because you're scared that if you don't rig the election, mm -hmm. then a brand new electorate will evolve mm -hmm. and it will continue to open the cracks in the solid mm -hmm. South and let the new light of justice and diversity in. Yeah. We put our, line, our, our bare bodies on the line today. Yeah because we believe this is the wrong direction. The wrong direction. We should be going forward That's right. and not one step back. Not one step back. Hear my brothers and sisters today. Amen. Reverend Anthony J. Davis, pastor of the Mitchell Chapel AME Zion Church, Pittsburgh, Central North Carolina Conference of the AME Zion Church, Durham District Coordinator of the NAACP, and the first vice president of the Chatham County Democratic Party. Amen. Many pushing this agenda got into public office because of a race-based redistricting plan that is the most discriminatory since the 19th century. Its racial impact is undeniable. And the voter ID bill is simply a modern poll tax in disguise, Mama. even more restrictive than the ones passed in Alabama and South Carolina ending the popular early voting and Sunday voting is an outrage. Mm -hmm. They do not want people to vote. Mm -hmm. And this is, the, this is only their first 50 days in office. Right. And I believe that we haven't seen the budget yet developed by Republican money bags, Art Pope. Oh my God. The policies pursued in the chambers will devastate hundreds of thousands of North Carolinians who are already suffering. The leadership of this Republican supermajority are deaf to the cries of those whom Jesus called the least of these. Amen. 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 My name is Reverend Nelson Johnson, Greensboro branch of the NAACP. Surely, in the end, the people will rise up and sweep such leaders from office. Mm -hmm. Even the Republican leadership knows this to be true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is why they now seek to reduce the access of eligible voters on the sanctity of the ballot. Their claim of voter fraud is fraudulent itself even as Tom Tillis has been forced to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. The partisan desire to make it harder to vote and a deep fear of accountability to the voters mm -hmm. are what drives this voter ID mess. Right. The voter ID menace must be understood alongside Republican efforts to eliminate early voting and to outlaw Sunday voting even if local communities want to keep these policies that make it easier for everyone to vote. Mm -hmm. It must be understood mm -hmm. alongside their efforts to keep college students from voting That's right. That's right. and to inflict a heavy financial penalty on their parents if they do. 
It is part of the package, package. that refuses to accept federal funds mm. to help communities mm. pay for the machinery of, of democracy. Mm -hmm. We need more. We need more. We need, yeah. more. We need more, more, not less, not less. public access to the ballot. Yes, sir. Amen. And that's our struggle here. Amen. 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 I am the Reverend Dr. T. Anthony Spearman, pastor of Clinton Tabernacle African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church in Hickory, North Carolina, third vice president of the North Carolina NAACP. Voter ID must be understood alongside LaRoque versus Holder, mm. the lawsuit to overturn the Voting Rights Act of 1965, filed by former Republican leader Stephen LaRoque, who stands before the judgment of our courts today for misdirecting millions of tax dollars into his own pocket. I said for misdirecting millions of tax dollars into his own pocket. LaRoque says he is entitled to the money, but the Republican leadership of Pernod McCrory intends to be the new George Wallace pushing the so-called Southern strategy of Strom Thurmond, Governor Wallace, and Richard Nixon. The leadership of our General Assembly clearly sees political advantage in blocking the vote, attacking the public schools, and dividing North Carolina even further into the have and have nots. We need an economic development strategy need it. that includes all parts and all people of our state. Oh. They need to understand that we are a new South, a South rooted in the best traditions of North Carolina. Yes, sir. That's all right. Thank you. My name is Olinda Gillis. I'm president of Moore County NAACP. I'm a member of the North Carolina NAACP as the women in the NAACP. The voter ID bill constitute the most egregious trampling of democracy in these halls. But none of these efforts to decrease efforts asset, asset voters access to the polls are acceptable. Mm. They, too, will stand before the judgment of our courts. That's right. Yeah. But That's we right. cannot wait for the wheels of justice to grind while this legislature grinds up the poor and the down right. yeah. We have to hear, bear witness to the more wrong that is being committed here. We have asked the leadership to rethink. And I am Maria Palmer from Binkley Church in Chapel Hill. Uh -huh. Make no mistake, mm -hmm. this is the beginning of something new in the old North State. Say it. This is a new birth, much as it was on February 1st, 1960 in Greensboro, yeah. when four students from North Carolina A&T State mm -hmm. University sat down at the Woolworth's counter and a new generation rose up to freshen the wellsprings of democracy. Thank you, Lord. It is a new birth, much as it was in April of 1960, when the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee was born down the street here at Shaw University. Thank you, Lord. With students from colleges all over North Carolina and the South. It is a new beginning. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Would Minister for Faith, Hope, and Justice Ministries, and HK on J Coalition Coordinator. I work with the North Carolina Student Power Union, and I'm here today as a young person standing with the NAACP. Amen. In the spirit of the ancestors as they speak to the new day, in the spirit of our youth who see beyond the moment and into the movement, we call on all people of goodwill, regardless of race, political affiliation, yes, or yes, social yes. economic background, yes, yes. to examine the tools of nonviolent moral movement to expose the hurtful, immoral, and unconstitutional practices being passed in the people's house. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
those who cannot put on the yoke of nonviolence can still join and support this movement. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But if we care about this great state and all of its people, if we wish to act as moral leaders in our homeland, we must shine the light of the words and deeds of these shameful attacks on the poor and working families of North Carolina. Yes. Say it. Yes. Say it. Yes. Federal funds for Medicaid that stripped over half a million poor people of health care. Mm -hmm. Federal money for unemployment benefits for over 150,000. Step back. Forward together. Not one step back. And so we gather here today as we make our way now to the General Assembly. We'll take questions. I think it was Howard Thurman that asked the question, the real question of life is, what is your position when it comes to the disinherited, mm. That's right. when it comes to those who are hurting? You've got to make a stand. And I want the media to know the, bi the scriptures. We hear a lot from ultra-conservatives, but <laughs> the real scriptures, the interpretation, <laughs> love, justice, crying loud and standing up against yeah. those policies yeah. that hurt the vulnerable, the poor and children, is the heart, the heart. of the Bible, yeah. whether the Jewish Bible or the Christian Bible. That's right. If you remove all of the scriptures that deal with poverty, deal with justice, the Bible would literally fall apart right. in your hand. Mm -hmm. The heart of the civil rights movement mm -hmm. is love and justice, equality. Right. The heart of our Constitution is love, is justice, the good of the whole, mm -hmm. the common good, the general welfare. And so we're going, not angry, but in love, we're angry at the policies. Yes, sir. We hope the people will change. Yes. They may or they may not. Yes, we have a legal strategy. Yes, we have a voting organizing strategy. In fact, after this week, we'll be going to 15 to 20 different counties. We'll be going into counties as well, some of the legislators who have proposed some of this aggressive, po That's extreme right. policy. That's right. On May the 7th, we're going to be organizing a bash rally on Centennial Mall. Our lawyers are, are organizing. We have Southern Coalition Advancement Project and others. But in the midst of all that, mm -hmm. there must be an act that dramatizes mm -hmm. the shameful and ugly reality mm -hmm. yeah. of extreme mispolicies, mm -hmm. policies rooted in racism and classism. Yes. It can, we cannot get to July 1st mm -hmm. and 165,000 people who were formerly worked lose their unemployment and nobody's saying it. That's right. That's right. That's right. We cannot go through Thanksgiving of this year and remember the birth of Christ, knowing that on January 1st, 2014, 500,000 poor people will be denied mm. health care, health insurance, right. from the very people who, when they, were, when they are elected, mm. they get health insurance. Mm. We That's must right. stand. You got to stand. Yes, sir. You got to say something. Yes, sir. You must dramatize it. Must. And we are the, the part, somebody said, what do you want today? We want today mm. that there will be nobody in North Carolina or America or this world that says they don't know what's happening in North Carolina. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We say to the legislator, <laughs> you will not do this in the dark. You will not hide behind parliamentary procedures. Yes, sir. You will not have a civil debate and pass uncivil, unnecessary, and unconstitutional rules yes, without sir. us calling you on it. We have the moral authority That's and the moral high ground, That's and right. we will use it. That's right. And make it clear, we take no pleasure. I said this last night in going to jail. <laughs> Truth is, many of us didn't, that thought we'd never be fighting some of the fights our four parents fought again. None of us like giving our arms to handcuffs and being in under control. That's right. But what do you do? Mm. What do you do when a group of politicians are so recalcitrant that they won't even listen to debate? What do you do? Mm. What, what do you do? do? When do they you? pass in 15 minutes a law to cut 500,000 people's mm -hmm. Medicaid and in less than 17 minutes to cut 165,000 people's and 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 to, and to and they take 3 hours mm. to yeah. to take the first shot mm. at reducing voting rights that took some of us more than 200 years oh, to obtain. Right. What do you do? What do you do? You believe that history has shown that's right. that when you stand in love and justice and expose wrong, that's right. that's it may have a vote, mm -hmm. may even win for a day, mm -hmm. but it will ultimately lose. Yes, that's right. Right. 
because like George Wallace and like the white Southern strategy, these people here are also on the wrong side of history. Justice will roll down like Justice water will roll down. and righteousness like a mighty tree. Yes, sir. Are there any questions from members of the media? Yes. Just here with don't, or the circle, just open up. Don't cl open it all the way. We got a few minutes. We got to be here. We're waiting on something in just a moment. And so I've got a feeling everything. And if you think that's not right, I want you to holler, that's not right. Just this year started. As Tim Tyson is right to say it, when the extremists filed a case of the rope motion's holder to try to roll back Section 5 on health insurance, the poor among us. Yes. Defunding of public education, an attempt to make a voucher program that will cause more resegregation. The anniversary of the death of Dr. King, a regressive, a regressive voting rights attack on voting rights through poll tax disguised as vote ID and the plan 
is to do even more. And so in the face of racism, in the face of classism, in the face of public policy that will hurt the least of these and so many in North Carolina, already and just we have a legal strategy, but we can't just wait until the wheels of justice finish turning. Yes? Right now. Right now. We come as a moral witness moral. to shine the light of justice, justice. on extremism, yes. going backwards, and policy that violates our Constitution. And so we're going to engage in a time of prayer. Ministers will get pray. We say to the authorities, if you say that we're out of order, we, are, we will submit to your arresting us in this place. God, we ask that you be here with the General Assembly. Father, no matter how these folks got into this place, whether yes. they cheated yes, their way. Lord. Lord, we have been summoned here today yes. by the call of justice and righteousness. And we stand as your witness. We recognize that nothing is as powerful Thank you, Lord. as an idea of freedom and justice, mm. whose time unlocks itself against those who are innocent, mm. those who have no voice, no more, those who already have been suffering from an economic recession, oh and they have only poured vinegar and salt uh, into the room. righteously with you. Yes, God. I read somewhere, yes. deliver us from evil. Yes. I read somewhere, yes. every valley will Ooh. be exalted. Yes. Yes. Every mountain and hill will be made low. Yes. The rough places of evil will be made smooth. And the crooked places of unrighteousness uh -huh. shall be made straight. Yes. So, oh God, have thine own way have today. And we pray, yes, we pray for repentance. Yes, we pray yes, for these hearts to be moved, yes. to apologize yes. to the folk they have hurt, hurt. and not We've seen people blocked from health care, blocked from politics. So we're going to stand here in love. In love. We're not blocking anybody in. If there's a need to remove us in order to them to get in, but we're going to stand here in our last two prayers. I'm going to pray where they're at, Tim and Brother Hawkins. And then we're just going to sing a while. Dear Lord. We stand before you yes. acknowledging that we are imperfect, frail witnesses for your truth, that we see through a glass dimly, mm. school teacher, Have mercy. who's given her life for her yeah. on the, the, ed the public education that it, you afford to all yes, people. Yes. And we know they're planning, but what we're looking at is the avalanche of bad, regressive, extreme public policy. 
where the Speaker of this House, the Senate pro tem leader, and the governor are acting as like the George Wallace's of the 21st century. We reveal those falsehoods which are being told all around us because we know that that which is being done shall hurt some small child right. living in a small town this evening. We know that the laws which are being... Oh God, sometimes you speak in a still, quiet voice. Yes. And you demand and we pray. Everybody. Amen. 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 In good conscience, we're going to violate the rule of this house. We believe that we cannot remain civil in the sense of being quiet. We're not supposed to have protests inside this house, they say. But we're going to... Any more posters? Yes, they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Follow me, if you will, as we go to the other side of the chamber as well, and we're going to go sing it. Where's Bob? We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We
Again, Reverend, let's get your name. Reverend Anthony J. Davis. And you are with the church again? I'm the pastor of the Mitchell Chapel Amy Zion Church in Pittsburgh, Central North Carolina Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. What was accomplished this afternoon? You talked about it earlier today at your briefing. You went to the General Assembly. What did you accomplish? I believe that we accomplished much today. Today was a day where we gathered and basically lent our collective voices that we might shed light on a very, very dark situation that is happening in our state right now. We are under siege by a group of bullies, and I understand it best that the best way to take on a bully is to stand up to them. It's not okay to deny hundreds of thousands of North Carolinians the quality of life that they deserve. And we're here together to call the moral community together, that we might speak to be the voice for the voiceless and the underserved in this state. How frustrating is this to fight battles that were fought generations ago that you thought had been won? It's very frustrating. Um, Dr. Barber said it earlier today that he never thought that he would have to fight a fight that his fourth parents already won, but we're here to, to fight. This is not the end. This is not a moment. We will not go away. This is a movement and not a moment. What is the next step? Reverend Barber talked about a second wave somewhere down the road. Do you go back to the General Assembly and do this again, or are there other things in your heart? Well, I will echo Dr. Barber's sentiments, as he indicated earlier today. You'll be the first to know. With regard to the folks that are in jail right now, this is not the first time that some folks have been arrested. You had the same situation happen yourself. When you go through the experience, what does it do to you? Does it stiffen your resolve or does it frustrate you? Or what? It just inspires you to continue to do the work. This is moral work. I think that as a pastor, um, I am doing what God requires of me to speak for the underserved. Remember, the Bible talks about the least of these, the policies, the regressive policies that this legislature is passing. Um, will have adverse effect on North Carolinians. Voter rights, thinking about rolling back the clock, this voter ID bill will suppress more than a half million votes in this state. And the handwriting's on the wall. We, 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 we're very educated. We know what is happening here. The reason why they want to suppress the vote, because they see that there is a coalition moving, and North Carolina was moving forward, and their desire is to suppress the vote. You can't suppress for success. And today's event involved more than just the NAACP, didn't it? Yes, it did. We had what Dr. King would consider a biracial army, of people of goodwill who have come together to lend their voices for the injustices that are taking place right here in the state of North Carolina. And at one point, Dr. Barber talked about you tried to go to the General Assembly, you tried to sit down with them, you tried to talk with them. What was that like when they basically turned a deaf ear to you? Well, it, it was frustrating because, you know, we extended the olive branch as a coalition of people of goodwill. We extended the olive branch and it was ignored. So we have no other choice but to mobilize and educate. As Dr. Barber stated earlier today, yes, we will try it in the courts, but in the meanwhile, we're going to be lending our collective voices. We're going to be mobilizing people of goodwill to join hands to shed light on this very, very dark situation in the life of this great state that we love. Did it go the way that you planned? I mean, it was very nonviolent. Everybody was arrested, very peaceful. Did it, did it happen the way you wanted it to? Yes, it did. Uh, we are here in the spirit of the nonviolent tradition that we might come together to sing and pray. The doors to both the House and the Senate General Assembly off, uh, uh, sessions, they never opened up. They never, they never looked outside. I mean, I, do, you, do you think they heard? Do you think they understood? They got it? They got I, I'm, I'm sure that they did. And we believe that, as, as we have heard, a change is going to come because we believe in the black church tradition that prayer changes things. Thank you. I appreciate that, sir. Uh, just a quick update, and uh, so they, they, give or take, you can't, you know, there's no way to know how long the match strip will take and all, all that, but they'll be coming out anywhere between 45 minutes, hour and a half, and uh, could be, you know, an hour and a half or longer before the rest of them get all of that. But we're welcome, if you want to, we can go inside, I think it's nice out here, 
but you're welcome to go inside. One of the senators uh -huh. I'll to uh, turn to one of my colleagues. You can go out and take them some pieces. Yeah.